Tekken 8 is a really hard game. And most of you probably know that if you're playing the game right now. Go to any website, any social media, and people are complaining about this game nonstop. It's really hard. Some people say it's scrubby. Some people say it is a casino. And uh, whether or not we agree or disagree on that, I think it's important to recognize that even the top pros are struggling with this game. This is a match Arslan Ash posted to his channel uh, versus Yaz. Um, he's at a Saudi Arabian tournament. He's in the loser's bracket, losing 2-0 to a June player from Saudi Arabia. Yaz is a Paul player, and I don't have a lot of matchup analysis for you at this time. Uh, instead, I want to highlight the player tendencies, okay? Tekken, uh, one philosophy of Tekken is that Tekken is a game of anxiety, okay? And I want you to think about that as we watch this set. Remember that how you get your opponent to feel anxious and how you can get them to respond to your movements, to your attacks, and to your posturing is built around this anxiety of getting hit, okay? Uh, this is a philosophy from Chungi, coach for uh, Cuddlecore, and uh, I think it's a very, very cool way to look at the game. Let's play this match, and remember, Tekken is a game of anxiety. Think about that. So, uh, Azusena on the left side, Arslan Ash, Yaz playing Paul. And uh, you'll see a lot of attacks going on compared to like the Tekken 7 style of gameplay. But it's on both sides. Arslan is playing a lot of pokes, and so is Yaz. And look at this. 45 seconds have passed. Look how much HP is going down due to just the pokes. Okay, I'm going to rewind. Look at this from the beginning. Look at how Arslan attacks here. Down forward, 1-4. A low poke. Uh, his down back 3, specifically. It's a small trade there. Running 3-2 to some chip. Down back 4. And then look at that. So, after a bunch of interactions and, like, 6 successful pokes, Yaz is at half HP. This is very different from how Tekken 7 operated. Excuse me. I'm still sick, so we're going to cough a bit. Yaz is at half HP. This didn't happen in Tekken 7. If you took six pokes in Tekken 7, you were still pretty healthy. So damage is skewed heavily towards these pokes that do permanent health damage versus uh, moving around a lot, playing high coverage moves, and just looking for your low parry or counter hit. That's less of the gameplay in this game. It's a lot more interaction. And if you look at how Yaz is interacting, look at how Yaz is playing. really want to emphasize this. He goes low and mid. Right at the beginning of here, uh, from the start. Low, low, mid. He's attacking. Mid-low is the basic mix-up of Tekken here, okay? As soon as he gets a window to play, like he backdashes out of range. Look at this little moment. He backdashes out of range. All right? And then Arslan whiffed. So Arslan gives up initiative. He's like, it's not my turn anymore. I just whiffed. So Yaz decides to attack. He plays forward movement once, then does a mid. Arslan playing some jabs and 2-1s, and this is going to be really important later, okay? The fact that Arslan is playing a lot of jabs and 2-1, whereas Yaz is looking for a mid-low mix-up almost every time. Really nice block in the low there, right here. Down forward, 1 low. Arslan also playing mid-low, right? This is not exclusive to Yaz, but uh, it will come into play later. Really nice sidestep armor from Arslan here, beating Yaz's mash. If you want to look at that situation, Arslan hits him with the heat burst, right? Yaz retaliates immediately with the back 1-2. Or while rising one two, I'm not sure what this. Uh, I think it's a back one two, right? But Arslan sidesteps to evade, and the armor covers the second hit. Uses the heat dash and gets the kill with the backswing. Optimal damage, I believe, for Azusain in there. Round two. Look at this play. So Arslan was doing a lot of poking very successfully, right? Yaz makes a hard read and goes to this backswing blow. This is not a terrible decision because Azusain's punish isn't going to murder him here, right? The damage he gets off of this combo, though, is way worth it. So he risks going unsafe. It's a first of two. So these kind of volatile plays can really get in an opponent's head. Half HP, there is gray health, though. Arslan spring kicks. Luckily for him, Yaz drops the combo. Arslan playing a bunch of mids here. Yaz retaliating. And look at this situation, right? They both just kind of sidewalk. What's happening here? Arslan's trying to step off the wall. He doesn't want his back to the wall against Paul. And Paul, the Yaz, or Yaz playing Paul, follows him. And then immediately decides to attack with a mid. Arslan is playing this 2-1, some down forward ones, but none of it's really sticking. As a throw to change positions. Now Yaz is blocking, down jab to steal his turn back. Forward dashes and nothing. Nice whiff punish from uh, Arslan there. Of course, he'll go back two. Okay, Yaz is poking, trying to get his turn back. Oh, big sidewalk to kill. Let's look at the situation, right? So Yaz is playing, well, let's look at the situation and then I want to rewind a bit farther. So he does round running 3-2 and then immediate wall running 3-2 again. This is before the Azusena nerf. This is during the peak of her strength. He sidewalks and immediately blocks. And Azusena goes flying past. He chases down and gets the back turn punish. Why did this happen? 
We'll look at how Yaz is playing here. Jab, down forward one. Gets counter hit, right? Even further back, this kind of is a... Uh, he's setting up this kind of anxiety from Arslan, right? So after the throw break, he takes the low and does a down jab. So he's playing an interrupt style, like trying to steal turns, play out of frame, and get his, uh, just be able to take his initiative back. So he's playing kind of fast, is like another way to put it, right? Running up into his face, QCB2, jab, down forward one. So Arslan is convinced that he's playing mashy. Right? So that's why Arslan does a running 3-2 as soon as he can. But Yaz changes his strategy at this point, going for the sidewalk left. Right? So he, he set up Arslan to believe that he was just going to keep hitting buttons. And then he played his defensive movement. That's not casino gameplay, that's conditioning. That is what Tekken 8 is asking a lot of us to do here. In a Tekken 7 game style... You don't want to try to play all this because there's a lot of variance. Some moves are too powerful. I was just saying this wall running 3-2 is kind of a Tekken 7 move. Very high coverage, very, very oppressive and hard to deal with. But the movement in Tekken 8 is buffed, and that was a perfect demonstration of that. Arslan playing jab, down back 3, some small pokes, but none of the damage is really sticking. The down back 4 is crucial. He needs to do a lot of that for sure. And I kind of like this, right? Unconventionally... Arslan trying to play a bit more aggressive, a bit less safe. Does forward 3-2. The second hits a duckable high, right? Uh, Yaz doesn't duck it, but it's kind of good to show that and give him something else to think about. Um, mental stack, if you want, if you want to put it that way. You can see Arslan doing some more throws, some more jabs. And I think this is going to come back to bite him later. That's my analysis on this, and I'll show you. Beautiful sidestep left here from Yaz. Yaz is getting a lot of sidewalks off in the neutral on Arslan's approach. Doesn't get a punish, though. He tried to duck the second hit. That's what happened. Arslan does down forward one. Oz is saying his second hit is a high. So Yaz ducks. But uh, he was going on a read. He wasn't going on a straight reaction there. Small 2-1 punish. Arslan with a huge lead here. This is pretty good. He goes for the down forward two. I kind of like that. Oh, but this is where it starts getting ugly. Running two from Paul does a huge chunk of damage. The life bars are now equal. Yaz is just running up and attacking. And that is so painful. If you've played ranked, this has probably happened to you. Arslan has been playing so much jab and grab, right? That when he goes for this grab here to change wall positions, which he did last round, Yaz does a flash duck. Check this out one more time. I know I'm rewinding a lot, but uh, this is really important analysis. Yaz does the mid and then just does a flash duck. He was doing this in advance. Not a reaction, just a straight hard read. Flash duck while standing punish. And I believe this is because Arslan has been showing so much grab and jab. Just constantly showing these options that Yaz could choose to hard counter. Alright. So again, this is why I was saying I think Arslan's use of 2 on and grab will come back to bite him. Every time Yaz is coming in, it's a mid or a low. It's always a mix-up. Nice counter hit here from Arslan. Again, huge health lead. Running 3-2. Not making the same mistake as last time. He does a single running 3-2, doesn't do it again, he does the down back 3. And you could see that Yaz actually sidewalked, so he was at risk of dying again. Arslan was, but Arslan tracks him. Down jab to steal his turn back. Death Fist, raw. A lot of damage coming in. Running 2, ugly wall situation here. And once again, Tekken is a game of anxiety. What happened here? Once again. How is Yaz playing? Really fast. Down jab, right? Mash buttons, run up and do the death fist. Slight delay on his timing, right? He dashed up and hesitated a split second and then did the death fist. And that gives him this huge combo, which we'll skip ahead. And now look at how Yaz plays this. Forward dash and then back dash sidewalk. If he did forward dash, forward dash, death fist demo man, Arslan kills him here with the uh, heat smash. But again, he gave Arslan the anxiety of his attack by playing fast interrupts, going for uh, the straight mix-up after a slight delay, and then baited Arslan into trying to keep him out. This is Tekken. This is Tekken. Very, very well played from the odds. So Arslan, taking a loss in the loser's bracket in game one, uh, I believe this is a remake. Yeah, this is a remake. So he takes a loss in game one, switches characters, and is running it back one more time. Running the Nina, which is his original, original main, believe it or not. I know he was famous for playing Kazumi uh, and his first, like, breakout Evo win, right? But uh, he was a Nina main. And look at how he's immediately playing a lot more active. 
mid and low mix up catches Yaz with the mid slight wall slight wall combo difficulty with the sidewall there and look at this he's pushing the offense mid low high and then armor right away keep his offense going Yaz did a sidestep crouch dash and got hit running one plus two plus frames little back dash there armor again Tekken 8 is aggression now he's showing Yaz that he's playing a lot more aggressively and look again, Yaz is playing a very basic mid-low offense. Mid, low, mid, mid. Backs off, sure. They can play some neutral. It's not like a total like attack fest, but um, he's playing mix-ups most of the time. Here he goes for a launch attempt with the QCF1. Um, it's a high, sure. But it's a high value move. Same with the QCB2 here. Arson goes in with the slide. Beautiful block. Okay, Arson stops him. Wow. This is a good read. So Arslan stops him from sidestepping with this homing back 2-2. And Arslan had been pushing the offense nonstop, whether it's an armor move or continued pokes. So Yaz throws a parry. Can't chicken those anymore. Wow. This is, this is fascinating. Yaz does this. Uh, QCB2 gives up his turn, right? Uh, so he should have to block here. But he disregards his minus frames and just swings again. And Arslan is caught dashing forward. This is, again, kind of a... Uh, a Tekken 7 thing. You would play a lot of forward movement in Tekken 7 because it's a low commitment. You can't get counter hit or low, par low parried if you're just moving forward. But you can get smacked in the face. Demo Man hits. Nice blocks from Arslan. Beautiful punish. Counter hit. Yaz tried to mash again. And he just kept it going. He didn't slow down. Nice little change of pace from before where he would speed up and then slow down again to get Arslan to whip. So Yaz is playing with the idea that he might play Mashy or he might play Solid. And uh, let's look at this situation. Now Yaz is doing something even slightly different. He's changing it up again. So whereas it was mid-low, mid-low right away, he's playing an empty crouch dash, threatening the Demo Man, threatening the Death Fist, threatening the Jumping Knee, but not actually doing any of them. And then he tries to do a delayed Demo Man. No luck. Nice punish from Arslan. These down jabs are so high value. Look at this. Nina doesn't have a hop kick, right? She has a little jumping kick that's does not really a launching hop kick. But here low. And then just take your turn back with a down jab. With low parry being so much weaker in Tekken 8, this down jab is less risky. They have to hard call it out or sidestep and launch it. But uh, that's a lot harder to do than just input a quick low parry and then stand back up. So Yaz is getting a lot of value out of the down jab. That was tough. So what happened last time? Arslan did down forward 1-2 and then back 2-2 two, two to catch the sidestep. Yaz did a parry after the back 2-2. Two, two. So Arslan expecting Yaz to play Mashy, which he's been doing the pass round, right? Playing at frame disadvantage. He was minus frames and just kept swinging. Arslan finishes the string, but Yaz is prepared and ducks the third hit. Yaz constantly changing between am I going to mash or am I just going to play left hand movement based defense. Another fascinating choice from Yaz here. Forward dash, nothing. Forward dash sidestep right, right? He was forward dash sidestep right trying to bait Nina's response. This is how he beat the Yaz Usaina last time. But Arslan doesn't bite. Heat dash, plus frames. Raw death fist. Nice. And I like what Arslan did here. I didn't like all this forward movement. That's kind of scary, especially with how Yaz has been playing. But... Arslan's a better player than me. He realizes Yaz isn't going to mash anymore. So he just goes for the low sweep. And that kills. Yaz was probably betting on Arslan giving up his turn with some mids. Uh, so he could resume his own offense. And Arslan just hits him low. Beautiful, beautiful minus 14 punish from Yaz here. Good patience to beat the armor. And this is going to hurt. Paul gets the running two. Breaks the floor. He does a running two again to set up this wake up situation. This is interesting. If you're a Paul player, pay attention. Down one hits here, right? And Arslan is just trying to stand up. So this situation is a is a interesting 50-50. Small reward, but interesting. If Nina stands up, he gets down one. If she side rolls, I presume he gets like a quarter circle forward three, the advancing low. He tries the running two again. It's minus 10 on block, but it's a new move. So I'm not surprised Arslan wasn't ready to punish this. Instead, he just position changes with the throw. Counter hit, down back two. This is good. Slightly suboptimal combo. Um, again, when you play multiple mains, it's hard, and this is a tournament situation. But you would probably want to just blow up the wall, 
and then use your tornado instead of using it here so you could carry him to the next wall. Unfortunate combo drop here. He's running up and doing a bunch of down forward ones. There's a low, but what a sidewalk left. Yaz is so prepared. Look at how he plays this situation. So usually he mashes on minus frames, right? That's what we saw earlier. He does this while standing four, and instead of mashing, he sidesteps. And that catches Arslan retaliating and playing in frame. QCF3. He, this is an ugly situation, and I don't know where that low parry came from. That low parry was insane, right? Heat burst, you're only plus one. Right? Heat burst on block. Only plus one. Opponent standing. He could go for Death Fist Demo Man, which is what most people would expect. But he read that Arslan would try to shut down the mix-up. And I thought maybe he did a crouch dash to get the low parry. But it doesn't look like he's crouch dashing. It doesn't look like he's crouch dashing. He's not advancing forward. He just hit down forward. I think that was a hard read. Absolutely incredible. Now Arslan on elimination point. Run up Demo Man, and this is what I'm saying. Yaz is good at imposing anxiety. He's been playing movement, he's been playing defense. He runs up and just does crouch dash to, to close the space. Crouch dash to close the space, and then Demo Man. Runs up, threatening so many forward dashes, right? So, Arslan had been playing with Azusena a lot of jabs and grabs. Yaz is always threatening this Death Fist Demo Man mix up and playing around that. He plays the forward forward two. Nina blocks. Very good. Armor. Good choice. I think Yaz mashed. Yaz ducked. Probably for... He did a duck while standing three. This is how he killed the Azusena last round. Right? Where Arslan tried to grab and he ducked under. But Arslan adapted. Goes for the mid. Low. Nice. And then he goes for a high value low. Very important. Clearly, Yaz was not afraid to risk his life every single time, right? Arslan follows suit. Sometimes you just gotta do the low. You gotta get them to respect you. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting movement. Running one plus two, plus frames, right? Instead of respecting the plus frames and just blocking, he plays a sidestep right block, which is pretty good. As you can see, he got the max reward from it. Blows up the wall, and his combos are ready. You better believe it. And now this is a death situation. Mid, mid, mid. Guard break, but the back dash gets out of range. Arslan panics on the whiff punish. Could have gotten some kind of combo into Rage Art, but he was holding the heat smash and just blows it right away. 1 2 to control, and I love this. I love this. Arslan saves his life. So Arslan, right after the heat smash hits, runs up and plays a 1 2. What has Yaz been doing? Forward movement, forward movement, forward movement, dev demo man, bunch of moves, right? Play the one, two, keep him under control. And as soon as you have the plus frames, don't play games. Just go for this sweep. Just go for the sweep right away. Don't do any hesitation stuff. Don't run into any other thing. Just go for the sweep. And Arslan saves his own life. Hanging on by a thread, but that was a really good adjustment. All right. Last game is on Sanctum. An immediate hitbox right at the beginning. QCF3. Count, they both went for like a high value counter hit move. Nina going for the slower mid, but Paul having a faster low that counter hits. And then look immediately. Instead of playing immediate again, crouch dash nothing. Crouch dash nothing. And Arslan flash ducks. Right here. Arslan did a flash duck for this demo man. See that? Does the mid and then a down jab to keep his turn. He's poking. He's poking. Position change wall throw. Okay, nice block, nice punish from Arslan. But look at this, he's going for the string mix-ups, Yaz is, and look at how much damage he took for it. It's worth it in Tekken 8 to play your strings. If you're not going to get launched for it, like Arslan did for back 2-2-2, it's worth it. Look at how much pressure he's gotten, look at how much respect Arslan has been giving him, and he uses this string as an attempt to show another threat, right? Even if he gets punished here, it's not the end of the world. Arslan is not playing enough oppressive mix-ups to force him to preserve his HP. Now, it does matter if you whiff a high and get launched. Oh, unlucky wall position. Arslan doesn't get the right combo. I think he could have adjusted that, I'm not sure. I think forward 2-1-3 plus 4 is the tornado. 
All right, but he's still getting huge damage here. Watch out for the sidewalks. No punish. Nice block. Grab, beating the power crush. Really, really nice here. Run up, do the low. Straightforward. Mid-low mix-up. Don't play with your timings. Don't do a bunch of highs and grabs. Just mid or low and kill him. Make him respect you. Now, Yaz is playing different. He's not running in forward. He's back dashing away. Arslan has a bit more initiative here. Counter hit. Yaz played out of frame. QCF1 here. Sidestep and then a button. And Arslan just does an immediate homing move. Huge counter hit. Big opportunity. Nice. Doesn't drop the combo this time. Boom, boom. Half HP. A lot of gray health, though. Down back two. Look at the pressure. This is what I'm talking about, Arslan. Perfect. He's in heat, for sure, so that helps. But now, Yaz has to be afraid. Throw is broken. Oh, counter hit low. Unlucky trade. Running one plus two. Heat engage. Running one plus two again. He's going mid-low. He's doing the thing. Big whiff. Oh, I don't know what whiff punish he was going for, man. I don't know what whiff punish he was going for, but it was a high, 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 and then he did the high extension die. I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't know Nino well enough to know what he was going for. Let me know in the comments if you do, but running two, rage for Nina. QCF3. Was it four? That's a... That is right or left knee. That's left knee. QCF 3 plus 4? QCF 3 plus 4. Anyways, let's look at that situation again. He got counter hit doing this mid. I don't know why he chose that mid. It's like a safe mid, I guess. Frame advantage. But Yaz does a forward dash, a little bit of delay, and then the crouch dash counter hit. Yaz was totally comfortable running into his face. Totally comfortable running into his face. Run up, do a low. That's launch punishable now, but muscle memory dies hard. This is why when people said that Arslan was playing the crack, this is a good example of why you wouldn't want to do that. In Tekken 8, this is launch punishable. Tekken 7, it wasn't. So if you learned the punish memory for Tekken 8, it would have fucked you up in Tekken 7 because you can't go for the launch punish in Tekken 7. And likewise here, you can see Arslan's Tekken 7 muscle memory is still in play. Launch punishable low going unlaunched, right? It's really hard to change your muscle memory. And pros were not at the time that the Evo showcase was happening. There's before the TWT had ended, there was no way they were playing the crack. And that is a great example of that. Punish muscle memory is hard to change. Sidewalk left again, but he doesn't get his back, so he doesn't get a big launch. Arslan might have done that mid to stop the sidewalk. That might be why. Arslan going for the string extension. Love it. Slide. Back 2-2 two, two to stop the sidestep. Down forward ones. Mid-low, mid-low. Good block, though. Dash up. And this is another thing. With Arslan never playing a mashy style, Yaz doesn't have to be afraid. Runs up and then does the demo man, right? Remember how Yaz would sometimes just put out a hitbox? Arslan's not really doing that. So Yaz can run up and just play with his timings. Anakin, NA Pro, has famously said, even a toddler can mix you up. Which means, you have to put out hitboxes to control them. And if Arslan's not putting out hitboxes, he can just do the demo man. Wakes up and does the armor, but it's too late. They trade. Even though the animations play side by side, they hit it at the same time. Now Yaz, who is about to be eliminated, suddenly back. Good block from Arslan this time. Wall situation. Okay. Nice. Heat engage. He's applying pressure. This is what we like to see. Yes, armor. Catastrophic mistake. Arslan gets hit with a death fist. Death fist again. Demo man again. It's online ranked. What's going to happen? Don't no punish. The sweep. It's a last hit situation. It's a last hit situation. He just goes. Low. How did this happen? How did this happen? Let's look at what happened here. So, yes, he could have landed the combo, but this is again the Tekken 7 philosophy in our bones. If you were playing Tekken 7 as a pro, this is in your bones. In this situation in Tekken 7, in this situation, what do you not want to eat? A low parry or a counter hit? Okay? In this game, low parry is fine. You don't get a full combo. He could have gone mid or low, but Arslan runs up and plays 1-2.
He does a sidestep here. So one, two sidestep. Paul, that would be a Paul like down forward two mash, I guess, right? But instead, Yaz just delays. Oh, sorry, that wasn't, I was thinking of the wrong interaction. Arslan does one, two, which again from the Azusena match isn't threatening. One, two isn't that scary. Sidestep down forward one, two. That's a mid choice. I like that. But now he sidesteps again and does a button. And all Yaz has to do is just throw the death fist, right? How would Yaz have played this situation? I think in the reverse situation, well, we don't have to speculate. We can actually see it, right? I think Arslan can just play simple mid-low. Just pick a tracking move. Obviously, okay, I'm a, I'm a backseat gamer here, okay? I'm not a pro sitting in Saudi Arabia, okay? I'm not here to say Arslan doesn't know what he's doing. I think this is reflective, though, of the Tekken 8 philosophy, okay? I think you just play the mid-low, right? Your worst threat is armor or rage art, right? Or, but if you move around and give up your frames or give up your situational advantage, you risk just eating an immediate timing button. And that's what happens here. He sidesteps and, and Yaz just goes, okay? All right, 50-50. Paul's plus 17. He heals a bunch of HP. This is an ugly situation. Here, the demo man is a frame trap. So uh, Arslan can't jab here. Arslan can't jab here. His best bet, maybe, is to do Nina's up forward three. But that's a, such a scary situation here, right? So I have the game open here. Take a look at this. Maybe his best bet here, because he didn't splat into the wall, maybe his best bet here is to just go for this move, right? So let's look at the situation. I'm going to reset to the wall. Well, it happened in the open, so let's just check it out in the open. Oh, jeez, I messed up. He does Demo Man, or Demo Man right away, gets jumped over. What if he does Death Fist? Right? He gets hit both ways. So it, the only way he wins here is in the wall hit situation, right? If it wall crushes, he's plus 26. If I can do a Demo Man, or a Death Fist. Oh, Plus 26, depending on the wall spacing. So here it's plus minus 8. He's plus 18. But at a farther wall spacing where you get to slide a bit, uh, you're, you could be up to minus 26, I believe. The point is, Arslan didn't actually splat into the wall. So he had a chance to go for that interrupt. But again, it's a new game. We don't have that muscle memory yet, right? So he just takes the low. One more situation. And look at how comfortable Yaz is forward dashing. Forward dash, forward dash, forward dash. Demo man again. We just saw the reverse situation. When Arslan was playing poke, move, poke, move, poke, move, Yaz just hit him. And Arslan might have had to just hit him. Miss punish there is unfortunate. Look at this last situation. No hesitation from Yaz. He shows us what he wanted to... He shows us what he would have done in the reverse situation. Get up kick. Mid. Slight delay QCF3. No dilly-dallying, right? He just hit him. And I think that is what Tekken 8 is. You can't spend a lot of time waiting for your opponent to make an unforced error. You can't just forward dash at them and hope they make a mistake, download their timing, and then start counter hitting them and low parrying them. In this game, you have to hit them. You have to hit them. And Yaz demonstrated that beautifully. And I think Arslan is going to learn a lot. Arslan is a machine, okay? He, his adaptation skill, his ability to learn new styles and new characters is incredibly impressive. And I think... After this match, we're going to see a different Arslan. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did. Thanks for putting up with my raspy voice. I hope it gets better soon. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And leave a comment if you want to see other matches that are worth reviewing. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.